From Hollywood, California, the Lux Radio Theater presents Charles Lawton in Ruggles of Red Gap with Zazu Pitts and Charlie Ruggles. Lux presents Hollywood. Tonight's play is the lively and romantic story of an English ballot set down in America's wild and woolly west. Charles Lawton stars in Ruggles of Red Gap with Zazu Pitts and Charlie Ruggles. Between the acts, you'll hear one of the most famous real-life butlers, Herbert Peacock. Our music is conducted by Louis Silvers. This program is brought to the microphone jointly by the makers of Lux Flakes and by you women who are buying Lux Flakes this week and every week. Here's what so many clever women are doing nowadays. They use Lux to care for all their washable clothes and to do their dishes, too. Do you realize how little this costs? Only a few cents, and it saves dollars things stay new looking so much longer. Remember, this is a luxable year, and to look your best, to benefit from all the loveliness this year's crisp linens, colorful cottons, printed silks, and rayons can give you, be sure to use gentle Lux flakes frequently, and buy the thrifty big box. Let Lux care for everything you care about, everything safe in water alone. Ladies and gentlemen, our producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Back in 1914, the British Army lost an eager recruit named Charles Lawton. They told him he was too young to fight. So he learned the hotel business, in which he was intrigued far more by the habits and manners of the guests than by the duties of his job. A little later, when another birthday had come and gone, Mr. Lawton was at last allowed to serve his country. The war ended, other ventures claimed him, until after ten years, he got his first part on the stage. Mr. Lawton had been acting three years when I happened to see him in London and decided he was the man I wanted for the part of Nero in The Sign of the Cross. His contributions to the screen since then have given the world many hours of glorious entertainment and artistry. Outstanding among them was his performance of the title role in Ruggles of Red Gap. And tonight, as he repeats that role for us, he makes his first appearance in a radio drama in this country. Mr. Lawton's latest pictures are two paramount releases, the Beachcomber, and Jamaica Inn, and he's now at RKO Studio, starring in The Hunchback of Notre Dame. With Charles Lawton come two other fine players, also from the original picture cast, Charlie Ruggles and Zazel Pitts. We hear Miss Pitts as Mrs. Judson, and Charlie Ruggles as Egbert Floud, leading citizen of Red Gap. So put on your ten-gallon hat and your high heel boots, as the Lux Radio Theatre presents Charles Lawton, Charlie Ruggles, and Zazel Pitts in Ruggles of Red Gap. Paris in April. A velvet breeze steals softly through the open windows at the hotel apartment occupied by Lord Bernstead. His lordship, on a visit from London, has had a restless night. By his bedside stands Ruggles, his valet. Immaculate in dress and soft in speech, Ruggles is the perfect gentleman's gentleman. He shakes the coverlet gently and speaks in the liquid tones reserved for awakening the master after a too enjoyable evening. My lord, my lord. It's ten o'clock, my lord. Hmm? What? Ten o'clock, my lord. Oh, ten o'clock what? In the morning, my lord. Oh, what day? April the 17th, my lord. Uh, what year? 1,908, my lord. Oh, same as yesterday. Mm, is there anything uh, wrong, my lord? Everything's wrong. Shellfish again for supper, my lord. Well, what of it? You know what they do to your digestion, my lord? They don't do a thing to my digestion. No, my lord. No, if you want to know, I had oysters and lobster and sherry and champagne. Quite, my lord. I had dinner and spent the evening with Mr. and Mrs. Egbert Floud. The, uh, Americans, my lord? Yes, they taught me their native game of, uh, drawing poker. Quite uh, a horrible experience, my lord. Uh, yes, it was. Mrs. Floud telephoned a few minutes ago, my lord. I informed her you were asleep. She said you had a surprise for me, my lord. She said... Was that all she said? Yes, my lord. A tea, my lord? Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, I say, uh, Ruggles, how are you on shocks? Shocks, my lord? Yes, you know, shocks, upheavals. You've always stood up under them pretty well, haven't you? Trust I have, my lord. I trust I always will, my lord. Yes, well, this has to do with the game of drawing poker I played last night. You see, in this game, there's a thing called bluffing. And though I say it myself, I'm particularly good at it. 
I bluffed Mr. Floud into putting up quite a sum of money. Then you won, my lord. Uh, no, you see, I didn't realise that Mr. Floud was not bluffing also. <clears throat> I suddenly discovered that I'd lost more than I could pay. And then Mrs. Floud said I'd got something they'd rather have than the cash. Then you didn't lose any money, my lord. Uh, no, Ruggles, I, uh, I lost you. <laughs> Ruggles! I'm extremely sorry, my lord. <coughs> did, I, uh, did I understand you uh, to say, my lord, that you had uh, lost me? I did. <coughs> Ruggles, please. Do I, uh, do I understand, my lord, that I was the stake in this game of chance? Uh, yes, Ruggles. Apparently this flower woman had her eye on you. You don't have to go if you don't want to. If I was lost like that, my lord, I am a debt of honor. I have to be paid, so to speak. Well, it's uh, dash sporting of you to go off like that, Ruggles. Go off, my lord? I've an idea. Well, I rather think they want to take you out to America. America, my lord? A country of slavery? No, no, I think that's all finished. I believe some chap by the name of Pocahontas did something about it. Uh, there, wouldn't be surprised if this isn't that flower chap to collect you. Collect me, my lord. Uh, will you answer it? I, uh, oh, tell him I'm ill, will you? Yes, my lord. Yeah, uh, howdy, Bill. Morning, sir. You remember me, don't you? Floud's the name, Egbert Floud. Yes, sir. Won't you uh, come in, please? Mm, thanks. <clears throat> now, uh, now look here, Bill. This thing ain't my idea, you know. It's Effie's. She's my wife. And when she once makes up her mind to do a thing, a whole herd of buffalo wouldn't stop her. Buffalo, sir? I don't know as I'd want you at all if it was me, but it's Effie. And she's some wildcat, believe me. I have no reason to doubt you, sir. Yeah. Now, uh, now I don't want to hurry you, but I guess we ought to be going because, uh, well, when Effie wants a thing, she'd fight a rattlesnake and give it the first two bites. A rattlesnake, sir? Yes, sir. Will you excuse me a moment? Please? Yeah, sure, sure. Go right ahead. My lord. Uh, yes? The uh, gentleman has called for me, my lord. Oh. Is there anything further I can do for you, my lord? Uh, don't think so, Ruggles. Uh, <clears throat> this is uh, all very uh, sudden, isn't it, my lord? Well, uh, yes. I can't help worrying about what is to become of you, my lord. Oh, I'll be all right. Rather fun dressing myself for a change. Yes, well, I've uh, put your digestive tablets over there, my lord. Yes, well, uh, goodbye, Ruggles. Uh, look after yourself. Yes, my lord. I'll return later for my things, my lord. Goodbye, my lord. Goodbye. Uh, uh, say, Bill, I'm just looking at this picture on the wall here. What's it supposed to be? The uh, French Revolution, sir. The aristocrats on their way to the guillotine. I am ready to leave now, sir. Come on in, Colonel. Hey, Effie, he's here. I got him. Yeah, sit down, sit down, sit down, Colonel. Colonel, sir, my, my name is... Uh, sit down, make yourself at home. Egbert, is that you? Yeah, here he is, Effie, hog-tied and waiting. Well, Mr. Ruggles, this certainly is a pleasure. And are we delighted to get you? I do hope you're going to be very happy with us, both here and in Red Gap. Red Gap, madam? Yes, Red Gap, Washington. Our hometown, you know. A little bourgeoisie, I'm afraid. But you'll find a few of us really do care about what's happening in the Hoti Mundi, or a society, as you call it. Yes, madam. Uh, now, Ruggles, I want you to start right in this morning. The first thing you can do is to take Mr. Floud out and buy him some new clothes. Yeah, uh huh? Well, what's the matter with these I got on? And then, Ruggles, after you've made Mr. Floud presentable, you might spend a few hours with him in the art gallery. You, the art galleries? Oh. Yes, dear. Art galleries. Art, Ruggles, is Mr. Floud's emotional outlet. Yes, madam. Uh, but you mustn't let him stay too long. We have some very important people coming for dinner. Very, uh, distant, uh, gee. Yes, madam. <laughs> yeah. Now, you see what I mean about the wildcats and the rattlesnakes? Uh, do you know anything about art galleries, Bill? If I may be allowed to say so, sir... 
we have a common uh, sympathy in the pictorial arts, sir. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, then, come on, then. I'll take you to a good one. <laughs> Waiter, give me another of the same, will you? Oui, monsieur. Mr. Cloud, may I remind you, sir, that Madame instructed us to go to the art gallery? Yeah, now, listen, Colonel. I get all the art I need right here at this table. Now, sit down. Make yourself comfortable. Oh, no, sir. Why? What's the matter? Sir, uh, there is a certain difference in our walks of life, sir, which makes it impossible for me to sit at the same table with yourself, sir. Well, well you, 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 you ain't ashamed to sit here, are you? Ashamed? It isn't that, sir. It, uh, it just doesn't do for a gentleman's servant to sit with his superior, sir. Your superior's nothing. You're as good as I am, and I'm as good as you are, ain't I? Well, uh, sir... Well, ain't I? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Well, then, what's eating you? Now, sit down. Take the weight off your shoes. Yes, sir. If you insist, sir. Ah. There you are. That didn't hurt much, did it? <laughs> well, what you looking so funny about? You ain't sick, are you? I'm in excellent health, sir. But it is rather a shock to find oneself breaking the tradition of generations. Well, don't let it throw you, Colonel. Excuse me, sir, but you must remember to address me as Ruggles, sir, and not as Colonel or as Bill or as Mr. Ruggles as you've been doing, sir. Now, why? Now, why? Why do you say that? Why can't I call you Colonel? If we were overheard, sir, people might take us to be equals. Now, listen, let me tell you something. Where I come from, everybody is equal, see? Indeed, sir. That may do very well for America, but it would never do with us. No. Yeah, well, I don't get what you're talking about. Well, we're, well, I'll be, well, look who's here. Hey, Jeff. Jeff Tuttle. Yippee! Sourdough, yeah! Yeah, Jeff Tuttle from Red Gap. Good old sourdough, yeah, yippee! Yahoo! Yahoo! <laughs> 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 well, I thought you were going to pass me by, you old longhorn, you. Uh, pass you by? <laughs> Why, you knock-kneed old saywash, <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, wait a minute. I want, to, I want you to meet a friend of mine. Colonel Ruggles, shake hands with my pal Jeff Tuttle from the state of Washington. Well, pleased to meet you, Colonel. How do you do, sir? But I have no military title whatever, sir, never having served our king, not even in the ranks. Well, that's all right. Any friend of sourdough's okay with me. Say, uh, what's the matter with setting down? Yeah, sure. Sit down, Colonel. Sit down. Well, Jeff, you old stinging lizard, where'd you turn up from? Europe. Me and Amy's been all over Europe and Italy. Um, say, uh, what's the matter with having a drink? Well, I don't know. Beer's all I know how to say. Uh, <laughs> you leave that to me. Uh, here, boy, uh, whiskey soda. Oui, monsieur. That's French for highball. You don't tell me. You... <laughs> well, how'd you ever learn it, Jeff? Well, it took me some time to get the accent. We had oh. some very important guests for dinner, so we were given definite instructions by Madame. Yeah, he means Effie. You know how she is, huh, Jeff? Uh, do I? <laughs> <laughs> Colonel Ruggles, that woman can bite through nails. Yeah, yes, sir. she chews them instead of gum, yeah. <laughs> Colonel. <laughs> Thanks, monsieur. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Just set the drinks down here, boy. And wait a minute. Bring us three more. Hey, you old mustache. Yeah, you old coyote. <laughs> You? Mr. Cloud, I hope you won't think me impertinent. <laughs> you sit down, will you? Well, here's mud in your eye, Jeff. Come on, Colonel. Wrap your paw around that glass and dive in. If you excuse me, sir, I never touch. Oh, uh, go on, go on. Don't be bashful. Oh, uh, well, sir. Down she <laughs> goes, boys. Yeah. Ah. <coughs> <coughs> Yahoo! Yippee! Yahoo! Yippee! <laughs> Well, how long have you been in Paris, Mrs. Flower? Oh, uh, just a few weeks. Uh, some more er, duvies, Mrs. Tiflin. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bainbridge. Uh, thank you, no. Very kind of you to invite us, Mrs. Flower. Oh, that's what I love about Paris. One makes such good friends so easily. Uh, doesn't one? Yes. Uh, how true. Uh, Egbert ought to be here any minute now. I must apologize for him, but he's spending the afternoon in the art gallery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. yeah. Look out, Jeff. What's it, Colonel? Why, what, what in the world? What's that? Yeah, yeah, he's a wild one, Jeff. Yahoo! Oh, oh Mrs. Oh, Floud! Oh, please, ladies, gentlemen, it's nothing, nothing at all. Oh, do have some more earth stewies, please, please do. Hey, hey, hey Effie. Egbert. Yahoo! <laughs> yeah, hello, everybody. This is my old friend, Jeff. Jeff, meet everybody. Yippee! Oh, I'm afraid I must leave, Mrs. Floud. Oh, no, 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 please don't go. It's, it's quite all right. It's nothing. Good evening, it's... Mrs. Floud. So sorry. Yeah, well, what's the matter? What's the matter? Everybody gone? Hey, come back here. Oh, good night, good night. I'm so sorry. I, I don't know what. Oh, good night. Good, good night, everybody. Well, 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 what's the matter, Effie? Ain't they going to stay and eat? Egbert Floud, you... you... 
You've been drinking. You, oh, me drinking? Oh, Effie. Uh, hey there, Effie. You shut up, Jeff Tuttle. Oh, oh, oh. You've disgraced me. That's what you've done. I was never so mortified in my life. And you, Ruggles, I entrusted him to your care. Can you bring him home like this? Well, why don't you speak? What have you got to say for yourself? Yahoo! Ruggles! The curtain falls on Act One of Ruggles of Bread Gap, starring Charles Lawton with Zazel Pitts and Charlie Ruggles. During our brief intermission, we bring you the Browning family. It's a hot summer day, and we find Dot Browning visiting her friend Janie Barrett across the lake. The two girls are talking about a party they're going to next week. What are you going to wear, Janie? My white cotton evening dress. Gee, I wish my hands weren't so red. They look dreadful against that white. I know. Hands seem to show so much more in the summertime, don't they? Mm-hmm. And it's awfully hard to keep them nice-looking, swimming and grubbing around the garden, not to mention dishwashing. Want to know something, Janie? What? I think it would help a lot if you use Lux Flakes for your dishes. Why? Because Lux is so easy on your hands. It doesn't make them all rough and red, the way a lot of soaps do. We always use it at home. And your hands always look nice, too, Dot. Well, you just try Lux Flakes and see how much it helps. I certainly will. I'm going to ask Mother if she won't get a box tomorrow. Well, that's just grand. Then maybe you'll have nice hands in time for the party. In the summertime, nice hands are more important than ever. It isn't any fun to get all dressed up in pretty short-sleeved dresses and light pastel colors and then have rough, red hands spoil your whole appearance. Your hands need special attention. Now listen, you wouldn't dream of washing your hands with harsh kitchen soap, would you? Then why expose your hands for hours to soaps like that in your dishpan? You're letting harmful alkali roughen and coarsen them. It's so unnecessary. Use Lux Flakes for your dishes and help your hands stay soft and smooth. Because Lux has no harmful alkali, absolutely nothing to bite and sting your skin the way harsh soaps do. Lux is gentle as the finest toilet soap. And a little goes so far, Lux is thrifty. And now I see Mr. DeMille is ready for Act Two. We continue with Ruggles of Red Gap, starring Charles Lawton as Ruggles with Zazu Pitts as Mrs. Judson and Charlie Ruggles as Egbert Cloud. Ruggles has been forgiven for his first misstep. And now, far from his native Piccadilly, far from the comforting notes of London's Big Ben, he journeys fearfully through the vast reaches of the West toward Red Gap, Washington. Oh, we're almost there now, Ruggles. Indeed, madam. I have seen none of the usual signs of an approaching city. Well, Red Gap ain't exactly a city, Bill. Fastest grown town in the state, though. Uh, we shall be met by my sister and my brother-in-law, Mr. and Mrs. Belknap Jackson. Oh, you'll find Mr. Belknap Jackson quite the gentleman. Yeah, yeah you sure will. <laughs> Effie's mother, Ma Pettengill, made a barrel of money in oil, and Belknap such a gentleman, he come all the way out from Boston to marry into the family. Egbert, <laughs> be quiet. Uh, Mr. Jackson is the leader of our North Side set models. You'd hardly believe it, but until he came to Red Gap, nobody even thought of putting doilies under the finger bowls. No, no nobody even thought of finger bowls. <laughs> really? How very extraordinary. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. You see that sign out there, Bill? You see what it says? Keep your eye on Red Gap. A rootin' tootin' town. Ho, ho, ho. Don't that make your heart beat faster, huh, Bill? Well, uh, in a way, it does so. Welcome home, Egbert. Yeah, huh? Oh, hello, Belknap. Oh, how are you, Effie? A uh, Belknap, mon cher, Belknap. How are you, mon cher? I have the carriage waiting, Effie. Uh, thank you, Belknap. Oh, this is Ruggles, Egbert's man. We persuaded our friend, Lord Bernstead, to let him come to us. No, really? <clears throat> Take the bags, Ruggles. Very good, sir. Egbert, hey, Sardo! Look at there, there's Ma. Ma Pettengill, why, you old maverick, Sardo, you. Sardo, you old horn toad. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a sight for sore. You're getting prettier every day. Oh, go on, you bow-legged lizard. <laughs> Mother, please. Oh, hello, Effie. Mm, you're getting fat again. <laughs> oh, Ma, Ma, listen, I want you to meet the colonel. 
Colonel, this is Ma Pettengill. Hi, Colonel. Where's your uniform? Mother, this is Egbert's servant. Uh, shall we leave, Effie? Sure, go ahead. I'll take the Colonel home for you. Uh, Mother, you can't. Why not? You ain't going to leave him here, are you? Come on, Colonel. I'll give you a hand with those grips. Thank you, Mother. <laughs> Well, this is it, Colonel. Our little gray home in the West. Twenty rooms and you could drown in the bathtub. It is most impressive, madam. Never mind that madam business, Colonel. Jeff Ma to you, Ma Pettengill. Uh, yes, madam. Go ahead in, Bill. After you, madam. Well, that's certainly sweet of you. Thanks, Colonel. Hey, Maisie, Willie, come here. <laughs> yeah, he is, Ma. This is our maid, Colonel. How do you do? Oh, pardon, please. Are you calling me, Missy Ma? And this here's our cook, Willie Lung. Meet Colonel Ruggles, folks. How do you do? Uh, how do, Colonel? Oh, me, pleasure to meet you, Colonel. Now beat it, folks. We want dinner in a hurry. <laughs> okay, Ma. Oh, all right, Missy Ma. Uh, I beg pardon, madam. Was uh, that a genuine blackamoor? Yeah, sure. And, uh, and, and a China person? That's right. Well, what do you think of the place? It's, uh, it's large. Uh, Ruggles! Ruggles! Oh, here you are. Yes, madam. Uh, Ruggles, I've just written a little notice of your arrival here as Mr. Floud's man. I want you to accompany Mr. Floud over to the newspaper office. I want it to appear in tomorrow's paper. Yes, madam. And Ruggles. Yes, madam. Uh, make sure that Mr. Floud doesn't stop off anywhere. <laughs> you know what I mean, Ruggles. Yes, madam. <laughs> Well, come on, Bill. What you stalling around about? Shake your feet. Yes, sir, but are you sure the newspaper office is in this direction, sir? Now, stop worrying, Colonel. But I was uh, definitely instructed, sir. Oh, sure, I know. I Listen to that. You hear that? That's Nell Kenner singing. Ain't it beautiful? Huh? Come on. Yes, sir. But just where are we going, sir? We're going to Nell Kenner's house. That's where we're going. She's having a barbecue and beer. Barbecue, sir? Yeah, yeah, that's roast cow. Now, come on in and mix around with the boys, huh? Oh, no, sir. J say, looky here. Now, who are you working for, anyway? Why, uh, you, sir. Well, then, come on in and mix. Mix, sir? Yes, sir. Hey, Sardo! Hi, Sardo! Hiya, boys! Hiya, Sam! Hiya, Joe! Welcome home, Sardo! Well, Jake Henshaw, you old coyote, you! <laughs> Glad to see you back, eh? Yeah, Jake, I want you to shake hands with my friend, Colonel Ruggles. Hiya, Colonel! Yeah, this is Jake Henshaw, Colonel, finest newspaper man in the West. How do you do, sir? Colonel, eh? What army? Uh, well, the truth of the matter is... I got uh, it. British Army, uh, retired. Uh, Here, wait till uh, I make a note. Uh, what's your first name, Colonel? It's uh, never used, oh, sir. Just for the paper, Colonel. Yeah, go on, go on, Colonel. Tell him your first name. Well, uh, it's, uh, Marmaduke. It's Marmaduke? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you'll excuse me, Mr. Cloud. Yeah, I, uh, sure, uh, I'll excuse you. Go ahead, Marmaduke. Oh, <laughs> yeah, go on over there and get yourself around some of that barbecue. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Good evening, uh, madam. Can I get you another sandwich? Thank you. Uh, I say, who uh, is responsible for this uh, meat sauce? Why, I am. Really? It's very excellent indeed, my good woman. If you're calling me a good woman because you don't know my name, it's Judson. I'm delighted to make your acquaintance, I'm sure. I know who you are. You're that colonel everyone's talking about. Oh, but really, uh, no, it I'm glad you like my meat sauce, colonel. Uh, yes, it's very good, very good. It's almost uh, perfect, in fact. What do you mean, it's almost perfect? Oh, I was just thinking that a few drops of this, perhaps, and a little bit of that might make it into a really superlative sauce. Well, let me tell you something. I've been making meat sauce for longer than I can remember. And nobody's ever found fault with it before. Wasn't finding fault with it. Well, what do you mean by a few drops of this and a little bit of that? Well, I mean that perhaps a little spice and some wine vinegar. Now listen, Colonel, you'd better stick to something you know about, like leading a regiment. Uh, uh, please, uh, let's not have an international row about it, what? Well, I don't... Shall we, uh, shall we dance? <laughs> well, I really shouldn't. I've got work to do. Oh, are uh, you uh, in service here? Yeah? If you mean, am I working here, why, yes. 
I always do a little cooking and serving for folks when they give a party. Oh, I see. Yes, I know what you mean. A man in your position wouldn't expect the help to dance. But nobody minds here, Colonel. It's funny, but you're the first one that ever made me feel different than anyone else. Might I uh, have the pleasure of this waltz? Why, sure. <laughs> It's been a grand evening, Colonel Ruggles. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, please don't mention it. It's been most enjoyable for me also, Mrs. Judson. No, Colonel. <laughs> Ruggles? Oh, I see. Will you excuse me? Mr. Belknap Jackson is calling me from the gate. Sure, go ahead. Ruggles! I, I hope I shall have the pleasure of seeing you again soon. If you'd like to come to tea someday, Colonel. Ruggles! Yes, yes, yes. I'd be delighted. Good night, Mrs. Judson. Good night. Uh, did you uh, call me, Mr. You Jackson? You know very well I did. So this is where you were all evening? Yes, sir. Well, that's fine. What prompted you to mingle with the guests? Oh, sir, I had definite instructions from Mr. Cloud, sir, to uh, mix. Well, I'm sorry to spoil your pleasure, but you must come home with me at once. I feel it incumbent upon me, sir, to see if that coincides with Mr. Floud's wishes. Never sir. mind, Mr. Floud. He can stay here. You're coming with me. I think I should speak to Mr. Floud, sir. And I say you're coming with me. Well, are you ready? No, sir. Why, you impertinent... I'm sorry you did that, sir. And I regret that I feel it necessary to retaliate. Uh, why, you... Good night, sir. I tell you, Effie, I will not be slapped by a servant, English or otherwise. Are you still going to harbor the ruffian? Certainly not. He's an anarchist, Effie, yeah. hitting my poor Bell Nab. Does it still hurt, dear? Yes, it does. I had cold compresses on all last night. <laughs> I fail to see anything funny about it, Mater. You will. Well. You will. Quiet, Mother. <laughs> Ruggles, come here. How could you do it? I, uh, coarsely gave way to the brute in me. Mr. Belknap Jackson is quite right. You will have to go, Ruggles. You mean, madam, that I am to be turned loose in this, uh, remote settlement? Remote Be settlement? You see, Effie, the man's quite impossible. you better pack your bags immediately. Uh, just a minute, folks. Before you go throwing Bill out on his ear, you better read this here piece in the paper. Well, what is it? Go ahead, read it. Why, it's about... Oh. Oh! What does it say? It's terrible. Colonel Marmaduke Ruggles, late of the British Army and an intimate friend of the Earl of Bernstead. What? An honored guest of Mr. and Mrs. Egbert Flowers. Oh, disaster. Complete social disaster. A series of entertainments are already being planned. You can't fire him now, Effie. Pull up a chair, Ruggles. You're one of the family. <laughs> listen to this, Martha, listen. Colonel Marmaduke Ruggles, late of His Majesty's Coldstream Guards, was honored at a tea given by Mrs. Atwater Wood. Colonel Ruggles to be guest at honorary dinner. A card party and dance for the British Colonel, a visitor from across the sea. Oh, I must have him. <laughs> we must all have him. Oh, ladies, this is the greatest thing that has ever happened to Red Gap. <laughs> I never thought you'd come here. I know how busy you've been, what with all those invitations I've been reading about. Oh, yes, yes, it has been a bit of a round one. <laughs> I say, what a spitting little home you've got, Mrs. Jensen. <laughs> oh, I just sort of fixed it up myself. Did you? Did you? Very snug, I must say. Well, topping. Oh, goldfish. Do you like goldfish, Colonel? Rather, I have always derived intense satisfaction from their silent companionship. Oh, have you? Oh, I say, well, well, this is rather a quaint picture, what? Oh, I say, who is it? That? Oh, that was Elmer, Mr. Judson. Oh, yes. Uh, Mr. Judson? Yes, he's dead. Really? A <laughs> fine-looking chap, I must say. <laughs> uh, Colonel, would you excuse me? I think the tea wa water is boiling. I say, can't I help you? Oh, no, please. Men are so helpless in the kitchen. Helpless, really? Oh, no, no. Oh, well, now, just sit down, and I'll pour the tea, and... Mrs. Judson, please. Oh, why, what's the matter? Oh, no, always bring the pot to the kettle. Never bring the kettle to the pot. What? Listen, Colonel, I've been making tea for longer than I can remember. Now, look here, don't let's get into difficulties about this, but you must listen to an Englishman about tea. If it were coffee, I should be your pupil, but we're making tea. And when making tea, always bring the pot to the kettle, never bring the kettle to the pot. 
Oh, Colonel, your knowledge is surprising. I don't see why you should say surprising, Mrs. Judson. The best cooks have always been men. I, I, I myself have pronounced views as to the uh, preparation and serving of food. Have you? Oh, yes, yes, yes. It would be difficult to describe the intense satisfaction I've always derived from cooking. And goldfish. Huh? Oh. You know, Colonel, you were right about that meat sauce, too. It's much better with the vinegar. Isn't that splendid? You know, if you weren't such a gentleman, I mean a colonel and all, I bet you'd do swell if you'd open up a restaurant. A restaurant? Oh, well, my dear Mrs. Judson, restaurant. Oh, I know it's silly, and excuse me. Well, sit down, Colonel, and I'll get the tea thing. Oh, thank you. Restaurant. Restaurant. Hmm. Restaurant. <laughs> Good evening, Ruggles. Ah, uh, good evening, sir. Yeah, you look quite comfortable beside the fire there. Uh, sit down. Oh, no, thank you, sir. Oh, reading? Uh, yes, sir. I've been taking the uh, liberty of reading again the life of one of your great American statesmen, sir. Wonderful man, sir. Mm, very instructive pastime, Ruggles. I found it so, sir. You seem in a very good mood yourself tonight, sir. I am. It's a pleasure to tell you that you're through. Did you... Uh, uh, you're fired, uh, Ruggles. Uh, uh, Mrs. Floud instructed me to pay your railroad fare to San Francisco. There's a train leaving at 9.30. See that you're on it. Train, sir? Uh, yes, uh, train, train, sir. Yes, sir. Goodbye to you. Hello there, Colonel. How do you do? What do you have? I think I've time for a small glass of beer before the train goes, thank you. Small one, huh? Hiya, Colonel. How do you do? Howdy, Colonel. Hi, Hi, Colonel. How do you do? How have you been? In excellent health, thank you. Hey, hey, Bill, Bill, come over here. Mr. Floud. Come on back here. Well, well, what are you doing down here, you old lone wolf? Hiya, Colonel. Uh, good evening, madam. Good evening to you, sir. I was uh, under the impression that you had gone out to the ranch. We set out to, Colonel. You just stopped off here for a little bite to eat. Sure. Sit down. This is, uh, this is most awkward, sir. Huh? What's he talking about? You, uh, you ain't been drinking, have you, Colonel? I should like you to know that, that I have only the kindliest feelings towards you both. Sure he's been drinking. No, he ain't either. He ain't eat. Well, what, what, what's up, Colonel? I thought you knew, sir. Thing like this is... Never happened to me before, sir. It, uh, it's something of a shock. What is? I've been discharged, sir. You, what? Who did it? Mr. Jackson, madam. Bill Neb Jackson. Why, I'll cut out that dude's windpipe. He can't fire you, Colonel. Really, madam? He can't, and he ain't. I'm the only one who can fire anybody around here. And I say you're working for me. As long as you want. Mr. Floud, sir. I couldn't be happier, sir. I couldn't be happier, sir. I, I, it, it was a disgrace, man. Well, just forget about it. Come on up to the house, Bill. I want to speak to that fella. Uh, no, sir. I'd, uh, I'd rather not. Well, why not? Well, sir, I can't go on posing as what I'm not. Uh, and I, I don't wish to remain in service any longer, sir. I, uh, want to make something of myself. I would like to stand on my own two feet. This is a land, sir, of great opportunity. We're all are created equal. You yeah, dare, dare. Now, that's just what I've been saying all along. You know that? Like Lincoln said that day at Gettysburg, he hit the nail right on the nose when he said... Uh, uh, well, what did he say? Well, that's funny. I... Uh, uh, well, what, what did he say? I don't know. Well, he said... Uh... Uh... uh uh, uh, hey, Sam. Yeah? Uh, what did Lincoln say that day at Gettysburg? I don't know, but I'll find out. <laughs> hey, Joe. Yeah? What did Lincoln say at Gettysburg? Shucks, I don't know. <laughs> Harry, what did Lincoln say at Gettysburg? I don't know. I wasn't there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, Curly. Yeah? What did Lincoln say at Gettysburg? Well, you got me. Ask Hank. He reads the newspaper. What'd he say, Hank? Search me. Hey, don't anybody know what Abe Lincoln said at Gettysburg? Yes, seven years ago, I thought of. Yeah. Hey, 
Nobody knows around here. Yeah, well, you're a fine bunch of Americans. Don't even know. Wait a minute. What's that you were saying, Ruggles? Well, what, 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 what was it, Bill? Go ahead, Colonel. Tell us how it goes. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. We are now engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are now on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this, but in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far beyond our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain. That this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth. Here. Yeah. I knew it by heart once myself, a long time ago, though. You know, it's funny how easy Americans forget the things that are said by Americans. We pause for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Curtain falls on Act Two of Ruggles of Red Gap, starring Charles Lawton, Zazu Pitts, and Charlie Ruggles. In just a moment, we present a very interesting intermission guest. But first, I want to tell you something very interesting about our product. See this large box of Lux Flakes I have here? How many cupfuls of flakes do you think it holds? Goodness, I don't know, Mr. Ruick. And you? Why, I think maybe five or six. Sorry, you're wrong. There are 12 cupfuls of delicate sheer flakes in one large box of Lux. That's enough to do your dishes for about 60 meals. Just a few flakes make so many suds, such rich, active suds, too, that it's thrifty to use Lux for dishes. And you know how kind Lux is to your hands. So when you buy soap for your dishes, remember these three points. Lux is speedy, it's thrifty, and it's kind to your hands. Get the generous large size box tomorrow. And now... Here's Mr. DeMille with our guest. The man we're about to present comes very close to being in real life what Ruggles is in fiction. He's Herbert Peacock, who, like Ruggles, came here from England and devoted his life to attaining perfection as a gentleman's gentleman and butler. 
For the last 12 years, Mr. Peacock has been a butler in the home of Miss Anne Morgan, distinguished lady of one of our most important families. Going across the country to hear his comments on our play, we bring you Peacock of New York. Thank you, sir. Only a man in service, like myself, can realize what a tremendous shock it must have been to others to be forced to break the traditions of his time-honored profession and actually sit at that French cafe with Mr. Floud. Although the butler would never presume to overstep the bounds where his master is concerned, he is indeed a gentleman to the staff he supervises. In England, for example, he gets his morning cup of tea brought to him in bed. My father was truly a gentleman's gentleman and was never known to do a hard day's work in his life. The true butler, wherever he is, sees all, knows all, and makes no sign whatever. Sometimes that's difficult to do, and sometimes it has his humorous side. I have a friend in service who could never allow himself to smile when he overheard a dinner table joke. Of course, no excellent butler would, but he had another reason for saving his laughs for the pantry's ears alone, so he could take his false teeth out and laugh without disaster. Incidents like this made me realize that many household staffs in New York, although they live close to some of the most charming rooms in the world, have few places of their own in which to entertain their friends. So we organized a staff club, of which I am secretary, where we, all, we supply all a social club can offer and have a fine steward who battles for us. The club publishes a magazine too, written by and for the staffs of homes and estates. We have many out-of-town members, and an honorary member, one of whom we're very proud, Mr. Arthur Treacher, who plays butler's part in ever so many good movies. He and Mr. Lawton can get excellent references from us, if they ever needed them. But the butler's life isn't all clubs and recreation. His domain covers everything that happens in the butler's pantry, and that covers a lot. Wines and how to serve them, the making of salads and appetizers, the arrangements of flowers, and many, many other highly specialized functions. You know, Mr. DeMille, that butlers are a class who spend years in one household, and quite naturally we feel, as Ruggles did, the tug of parting with families we get to know and love. We become part of the household. But although a butler is definitely a servant, he tries to make his service so fine a thing, so exact a science, that he maintains not only his own self-respect, but the respect of his master and mistress as well. This very week begins my 13th year with Miss Morgan, so perhaps I had better get back to my pantry and allow Ruggles to return to his work too. Will that be all, sir? That will be all, Peacock. The service was excellent. Back in Hollywood, we are ready for Act 3 of Ruggles of Red Gap, starring Charles Lawton with Zazu Pitts and Charlie Ruggles. Abe Lincoln's doctrine of equality, embedded deeply in Ruggles' soul, mingled strangely with his class consciousness. But acting upon Mrs. Judson's advice, he's preparing to open a restaurant called, with impartial patriotism, the Anglo-American Grill. He's rented an empty store where he and his helpmate labor earnestly to make it presentable. I... I can't move this. Oh, here, here, Mrs. Judson. You mustn't attempt to move these boxes. Allow me. It's certainly beginning to look like something. Yes, I, I'm not at all displeased, you know, not at all. It's going to be a large kitchen, isn't it? I guess I'll have plenty of room. I say, let's hope fervently that we shall need it. Now, I suggest we put a... Oh, Ruggles! Oh, Ruggles, are you here? It's Mrs. Are you here? Oh, Ruggles, I'm so glad I found you. I've been almost frantic. Is there something wrong, madam? Look, look at this letter. He's coming here, Ruggles, to Red Gap. He's coming to visit us. Who, madam? Why, Lord Burnstead. Who else? His, uh, lordship. Coming here. Yes. Isn't it glorious? Of course, I shall be simply frantic arranging dinners, parties, and receptions. But I'm depending on you, Ruggles. Oh, what are you doing now? Are you busy? Uh, yes. Uh, rather, madam. Oh, yes, yes, of course, yes. This uh, chop suey joint you were going to open. <laughs> well, of course, that's out of the question now. Oh, but here I am, wasting time, and dear George is apt to pop in on us any moment. Oh, Ruggles, you don't know what this means. Au revoir. <laughs> 
And don't forget, come to the house as soon as you can, Ruggles. Well, we'd better get on with our work. If you expect to open this place soon, why, what's the matter? His lordship, he's coming to get me. You're not going to let him, are you? I suppose he needs me. You mean you're going to give up all this to keep him buttoned up? What has he ever done for you? Yes, he did let me down. But I'd be the first member of my family ever to let his family down. And I'd have you know, Mrs. Judson, that it isn't just keeping a man buttoned up. It's heredity and loyalty. I suppose you could call it habit if you wanted to. Well, I call it downright foolishness. Why don't you practice what you've been preaching? First I find out you're not a real colonel. Well, I thought I felt it my duty to tell you. I didn't care. But now I find out you're not even a man. Maybe you'd better find out what you are. Oh, I feel like jumping in the river. Well, go ahead and jump. And jump in at the bend. It's deeper there. <laughs> Oh, look, look. There's Lord Bernstead now. Isn't it just wonderful that Effie is giving this reception for him? Well, let's get Effie to introduce us. Oh, come on, girl. Oh, look, look, look. Mr. Floud. Mr. Floud. Yeah, well, hello, 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 Mrs. Judson. Come on in, meet Lord Bernstead. Oh, no, I, I couldn't do that. Well, why not? Effie's got everybody in town here tonight. Mr. Floud. Is Mr. Ruggles here? Bill? No, no. Effie wanted him, but he never showed up. Oh, Mr. Floud. Here, here, here. What is this? What's eating you? I haven't seen him all day. I think he jumped in the river. He did? He what? Huh? Why, now, what would he want to do that for? On account of a woman. She treated him something awful. <laughs> well, who told you that? I was there. Oh, she said some terrible things to him. And now he's dead. You, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Keep your hat on now. We'll find him all right. Good evening, sir. Oh, it's a ghost. Well, good evening, Ruggles. My lord. Good evening, my lord. Where have you been? It's quite all right, Mrs. Judson. Might I have a word with you alone, my lord? Where have you been? Yeah, now, come on, come on, Mrs. Judson. Forget about it. I'll get you something to eat. Come on. Well, where has he been? Oh, I, I thought the Indians had got you, Ruggles. Glad to see you. I'm glad to see you, my lord. I'm sorry I wasn't at the station to meet you, my lord. Oh, that's all right. Uh, come in here, Ruggles. I've had a terrible day, my lord. A terrific fight. Oh, were you outnumbered? An even match, my lord. A woman? No, my lord. I was fighting with myself. Did you win? A decisive victory, my lord. Stout fellow. I didn't think you had it in you. Ah, you'll find me rather a changed man, my lord. I don't know quite how to tell you, but uh, here in Red Gap... I am considered important. <laughs> Quite a personage. <laughs> oh, yes. Colonel Ruggles, isn't he? Yeah, yes, my lord. Hmm. Colonel Marmaduke Ruggles of the Arcole Stream Guards. Hmm. Horrible mistake, my lord. Quite, if there should be a war. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, my lord. Uh, nevertheless, my lord, uh, when people think you are someone, you begin to think you are. That's what I've been fighting about with myself all day, my lord. Am I someone or am I not? Well, I only just got here, you see, so I wouldn't know. Oh, 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 I, I am someone, my lord. Well, let me be the first to congratulate you. How did you ever find it out? Ah, you, you, you recollect, uh, an, uh, Abraham Lincoln, my lord? Oh, yes, fellow with a cherry tree. Uh, no, 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 my lord. No? No, no, no my lord. If, uh, at any rate, my lord, I am genuinely sorry to have to tell you that I shall not be returning with you to London. I am remaining in Red Gap. Now, 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 wait a minute, Ruggles. It's no use, my lord. My mind is made up. I am entering trade, my lord. A restaurant. It's no good for you, Ruggles. You haven't the background for trade. Nevertheless, my lord, I intend to try. Yes, sir, Bill. Quite a restaurant you got here. Thank you, sir. Very kind of you to come, sir. Would you have some more meat sauce, sir? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Oh, uh, Ruggles, uh, where is Lord Bernstead? I don't know, is madam. Is he coming? I don't know, madam. I think not. Well, I can't say I blame him. I beg pardon, uh, Mr. Jackson? I said I can't say I blame him. Oh, uh, quite so, sir. Would you try a little of our uh, meat sauce, sir? It won't make this steak any more tender by any chance. No, 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 never mind. Never mind. I'll eat when I get home. Take it away. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, sorry, sir. Ruggles, did Lord Bernstead arrive? No. Oh, dear. Why, what's the matter with that steak? Nothing's the matter with it. What happened? I suppose it's wrong to hate anybody, but I dislike Belknap Jackson very much. Now, now, sit down, Ruggles. 
I'm going to get you something for your nerves. My nerves are quite all right, quite all right. Oh, Ruggles, everything must go off well tonight. It means so much. Oh, I better return to my guests. Your coffee, madam? Uh, thank you, Ruggles. Well, yeah, how's everything going, Bill? Well, it's a little difficult to say yet, sir. Your coffee, sir? Yeah, thanks. Uh, your coffee, Mr. Jackson? I told you I wanted nothing. Now, take it away. Belknap! It was purely an accident. I'm sorry you did that, sir. You're insulting, Ruggles. I beg your pardon, but you were insulting, sir. Listen, I stood enough from you, you, you boot polisher. Yeah, perhaps you'd like me to tell your clientele just exactly what you are. It's quite all right, sir. I've not forgotten what I am. Nor have I forgotten that I'm proprietor of this place. As proprietor of this place, I'm asking you to leave, sir. What? I'm asking you to leave. Well, if I go, all the real people will leave with me. If my success depends upon catering to people like you, sir, well, all I can say is, well, all I can say is, Mr. Bell, Napjack, all right, come here! Let go of me, let go! Now, come on, it's quite all right, sir. It's quite all right, sir. Don't you struggle. It's quite all right, sir. It's all right, sir. Now, here's the door. Now! Well, you seem in pretty good shape, Ruggles. My lord, it's, uh... Most unfortunate you had to be a witness to uh, this humiliating incident. In trouble, Ruggles? Yes, my lord. Excuse me, my lord. I have something of vital importance to attend to in the kitchen. Oh, certainly, certainly. Well, it can't be helped. Certainly it can't be helped. Ladies and down. gentlemen, it can't be helped. I have something to tell you about the proprietor, Mr. Ruggles. Be helped. I have known Mr. Oh, Ruggles, I heard you. So, you... so I'm a failure. Oh, no, don't say that. Perhaps I believed a little too strongly in the words of your Mr. Lincoln. No, you'll see. It'll all come out right. You can go somewhere else and try again. Just don't worry, that's all. You know, I had plans, but of course, uh, well, I have no right to speak about them now. Oh, yes. Yes, you have. I guess if I can make good meat sauce and Red Gap, I can make it anywhere. Mrs. Judson, I've never met a woman for whom... I've had a greater respect than you. Oh, Mr. Ruggle. I say, listen. Do you hear that? They're singing to his lordship. <laughs> they seem to like him, don't they? <laughs> hey, Bill. Bill! Come yes, on out here. Yes, sir. Bell, Come on in. Which nobody can deny. Which nobody can deny. I'm very fond of him, too, sir. <laughs> He's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow. He's a jolly good fellow, which nobody can deny. And so say all of us, and so say all of us, for he's a jolly good fellow. Bravo! Bravo! Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Were you old horse thief? What are you applauding for? They're singing it to you. For... Yeah, sure, for you. Hey, boys, who's all right? Ruggles is all right! My... My... My friends. God bless you all. <laughs> Good old Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I've just heard the last act of Ruggles of Red Gap, starring Charles Lawton. In a moment, our star will be back to take his bow. You know, sometimes it's better to let other people say things for you. That's why I want you to hear what three women have to say about Lux Flakes. Women just like you and your neighbors. Mrs. A.E. Symington of Long Island says... A big box of Lux does my dishes for 60 meals and takes away the drudgery of dishwashing. Mrs. John B. Deegan of New York says... About a penny's worth of Lux does my dishes for a day... And it helps my hands stay soft and smooth. Another New York woman, Mrs. B.W. Burr, says... It's foolish to bother with soaps that are slow and hard on hands when Lux is so thrifty for dishes. It takes so little to make a pan full of suds. Use Lux for dishes because Lux is speedy, it's thrifty, and it's kind to your hands. Women have discovered the amazing difference between Lux flakes and harsh kitchen soaps. Lux has none of the added alkali you find in harsh soaps. Nothing to sting and irritate your skin. It helps your hands stay soft and smooth. And Lux is thrifty. About a penny's worth does your dishes for a whole day. If the water is hard, a little extra Lux softens the water and gives you an abundance of suds. So the smart thing, the thrifty thing to do, is use Lux for your dishes every day. Buy the generous large size box of Lux Flakes. Mr. DeMille. Now we hear our star in a part that he's never played on the air before, that of Charles Lawton. 
I believe it's been nearly four years, Charles, since you were last in the United States. Yes, C.B., it has. It's been about four DeMille pictures ago, as they reckon time in this uh, place. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't count on that as a calendar. Motion pictures depend on inspiration and actors. You no, know, C.B., these actors can get very temperamental sometimes, can't they? Mm -hmm. Candidly, old boys, one producer to, the to another. If we could find some way to make the the these pictures without actors, it would be a very much more profitable enterprise. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I've heard that you've been producing pictures as well as acting in them. How does it feel to be on the other side of the oh, contract? Oh, C.B., it's a marvelous feeling when the picture's on schedule and everything's going smoothly. Uh -huh. Then, of course, there are the other times. <laughs> And I understand now why many producers are inclined to lose their hair. <laughs> you, you've had excellent training for a producer, Charles. Losing uh, my hair? <laughs> no, no, being an actor first. Uh, this matter of hiring yourself as an actor to yourself as a producer has its problems. I'm never quite certain whether I should pay myself a big salary, far more than I'm worth, and risk a loss as a producer, or pay myself low wages and perhaps make a profit. <laughs> How can you lose? Oh, I could probably find a way. But now that I'm doing a little producing, if, if uh, you ever want a job as an actor, CB, just drop over and see me. Uh, mm. My advice as a producer, Charles, is to stay clear of DeMille. <laughs> Confidentially, his acting might be just a bit dated. Oh, I don't know, CB. I've seen you give a swell performance in an office. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, I've enjoyed working with you in my first radio play in this country just as much as I enjoyed our association six years ago at Paramount Studios, CB, and that was something. Uh -huh. Good night. Good night, Mr. Larkin. <laughs> we hope your first performance here will be followed by many more. Charlie Ruggles appeared through courtesy of metro goldwyn Mayer Studio and will be seen in their new film, Balalaika. Zezu Pitt's next picture is the Walter Wanger production, Eternally Yours. Now, Mr. DeMille. As producer of the Lux Radio Theater, it's my duty each week at this time to tell you about the stars and play for the following week. Tonight I make a different kind of announcement. I must say goodbye. Not just for myself, but for all of us who bring you the Lux Radio Theater. Oh, we'll be back with you on September 11th. And that's not so far away. At least once every year, I think I owe you a little accounting. Since you, in fact, are partners in our enterprise. You're, you're co-directors in the Lux Radio Theater. So the 30 people who form our permanent staff and who work throughout the year to make the Lux Radio Theater what you want it to be wish to express through me their appreciation of your approval of this theater, as evidenced by the vast number of your letters and your loyal purchase of Lux Flakes and Lux Toilet Soap. Your support has made this theater the largest the world has ever known. Checkups show that an average of over 15 million listeners tuned in each week during the past year, not counting the great number of our Canadian friends. Let's take a moment to picture this audience. You in the great cities hear us. And so do you, whose homes are in those remote villages where the living theater has never penetrated. You've written us from the cabins of ships at sea and from snow-covered cabins, locked away from civilization by storms and distance. Letters have come from hospitals, from elderly people, from invalids, telling us what, what special meaning the Lux Radio Theater has for them, what help it's brought them. We assure you that we cherish these messages. But such credit as this theater may have won since last summer in presenting nearly half a hundred plays involving 1,139 performers, does not belong to us alone. With gratitude, we pass it on to you, to whom this theater really belongs, to you families who use Lux Flakes and Lux Toilet Soap. Between now and September 11th, we'll be working on the most ambitious schedule of plays and talent in our history, guided by the great number of comments and requests that you've sent in. <laughs> being, being human, we're, we're also going to try to have a good time. Our real vacation will come not only from our sponsors, but from you. Because we know that you won't forget us during this absence from the air. That you'll remember the Lux Radio Theater in the best way possible. By keeping Lux Toilet Soap and Lux Flakes in your homes. They're products of high character. In them is reflected the same high standard of uncompromising quality that your loyalty has brought our theater. <laughs> As I say goodbye, I feel as if I'm standing on the peak of a great mountain, which we've climbed together since this theater first came to the air in October 1934. The glorious panorama that I see is the most thrilling experience that can come to man. Its name is friendship. Wherever you may be on this continent, you have my sincere wishes for a summer of health and happiness. Until September 11th, 
This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night and goodbye to you from Hollywood. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>